LibreOffice Conference Talk. Take number 12. Hi. This is real take number 12. I really hate uh, pre-recording talks because uh, when you talk live, well, you have talked once, you correct yourself, you ignore uh, the way you are talking. Well, that's all. But for pre-record talk, every time uh, you listen to yourself after, well, hmm. this is really terrible. I should uh, take another attempt for this. And yes, another huge problem for pre-record talk that I not able to see Milano in person, not able to see you in person. My apologies about that. And yes, uh, this is another talk about uh, structured document text and how things are uh, happening in writer about this. And yes, because this talk is pre-recorded, I potentially duplicate some information which was talked uh, before. I cannot uh, dynamically react on previous talk results and uh, tweak some presentation, probably remove some errors, I don't know. So, it is uh, done as is. Sorry about that. Time to introduce myself. My name is Vasily Milinchuk. Nice to see you. Sorry, not in person. Sorry about too many sorries and apologies uh, to this moment. Hope it is uh, all to this moment. I mostly work with CIB software company and Allotropia company. Uh, we are doing LibreOffice as well, among other activities. Uh, I do in LibreOffice for around seven years. Right now I looked inside uh, Gitlog for my first commit. It is uh, marked as uh, 2015. So yeah, correct number will be seven years to this moment. To this moment I'm certified LibreOffice developer, of course, through for these years. The Document Foundation member and so on and so on. I am reachable uh, by my email used in my git commits. It is uh, still valid, still actual, it is not changed. Or by this uh, complex nickname on IRC or Telegram. I'm on dev channel, I'm uh, reading the data in a very lazy way, but uh, on any pink I will react. So if you have any questions uh, in, gen in general about topics uh, or according, according to this uh, presentation, well, ready to answer. And glad to see any feedback, because I do not able to see this feedback in person. And let's move on to topic of our speak. Mm. Done. And move on to main topic of our speech. At first glance, uh, SDT looks like uh, something related to the forums. And yes, if we look uh, uh, back in the history, since the beginning, it is a beginning uh, or dark ages for me personally, but probably somebody else uh, do see uh, how these features do appear inside uh, Microsoft formats. I don't know. For me, uh, these oldish uh, things uh, were uh, forever. And yeah, initially we have some uh, features uh, for document filling forms. They are made with usage of fields. They are for making a simple input uh, checkboxes or any combo boxes uh, or drop downs. And uh, they are quite primitive, limited in features. And through years, uh, these uh, features uh, were extended with uh, third party tools. Uh, I'm aware of some of them. Even at CIB, we have implemented some specific extension to these uh, form uh, features. And they are in production even nowadays, as far as I know. But, uh, well, guys in Microsoft decide uh, that, well, this uh, forms filling way is a bit outdated and uh, not flexible enough. And I agree with them. 
it is not enough and they do invent uh, activex forms well what else uh, could do guys in, at microsoft uh, in those days activex and ole 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 yeah it uh, brought much flexibility in creation of the forms uh, right now much more varieties uh, much more tweakable features of these forms we can use even the uh, complex uh, custom forms for it and of course this uh, brought uh, us uh, much problems with security and uh, of course uh, much problems in li LibreOffice to this and uh, since a while again guys at Microsoft decide uh, to do something new again this is what we know about uh, called structured document text and at first glance, as I said, it looks like uh, another attempt to invent forms, third attempts. But uh, looking forward, it is not only about forms. If we look inside the uh, word, well, yes, we inside developer tab, in design mode, we have classical buttons to insert some elements inside your document. And here, yeah, right now, we're inserting SDT elements, SDT forms. All our oldish uh, features are hidden under a special uh, drop down list. And here we see classical uh, form fields, active controls, and so on. So, all the uh, forms created uh, nowadays uh, with Microsoft Word are SDTs. Mm, except special cases when somebody decide to explicitly put uh, some legacy stuff. How things are uh, looking inside the uh, document uh, on XML level? Well, initially pretty simple. Inside, for example, the paragraph, we have a new token SDT. Uh, it has own properties. Here is a list of some properties and SDT content, where we have a uh, content inside. Classical run with some text and some content. Looks uh, pretty similar, uh, pretty easy, but even on this level, Writer do, has some problems. Um, in most cases, Writer don't recognize SDT at all. And uh, if Writer do recognize uh, SDT, it does not keep all the properties uh, correctly and uh, these properties uh, looks like a uh, nonsense but they are quite important uh, to Microsoft Word uh, to understand uh, some features of SDT and of course we have classical situation we open some document in writer save uh, as docx uh, back and we have uh, no more SDT or SDT is uh, in some invalid state or lost some information and so on and so on well, um, to solve such kind of problems uh, in the writer inside a uh, writer filter, we have a classical solution, grab bags. It is a special storage for keeping all the docx nonsense. We do not need inside a writer core by itself, but we need to keep this data for later saving back to docx because uh, this nonsense is uh, important for docx and for Word. So after some refactoring of this uh, gray uh, support for SDT, because uh, we were really bad, I think uh, right now it became a bit, bit better. Not perfect. I don't like uh, current situation. I still don't like it, but it became better, I think. And uh, yes, uh, this uh, does help uh, to resolve some problems related to SDT. And you see some five digit numbers uh, quite old bug was resolved uh, during this process but, but this is not all what's about sdt if we look uh, further uh, in situation well there are some levels uh, for sdt which can be used uh, in document practically uh, these are levels uh, defined in specification of uh, open office xml Basically, we have inline level. It is exactly uh, looks uh, like we have uh, an example before. 
uh, no problems uh, to this moment. Well, there are some nuances possible, but uh, no complex uh, efforts are required to fix something. Next one, uh, block level SDTs. And well, here we have uh, multiple problems. We had multiple problems uh, until the uh, work done by Miklos. Many thanks uh, to him about this, uh, because uh, when I looked into the, into the situation, I ran away uh, uh, and I'm, I'm scared. But he did uh, this job and it uh, seems things uh, became much, much better. Specification defined next uh, thing, cell level. It is a content of some table cell. Well, according to my understanding, this looks something uh, similar to block level, to previous one. And yes, uh, in case of block level, we have uh, some paragraphs inside or even tables inside. So inside the cell we have about the same situation. So, well, something similar. But what about uh, final type of SDTs? It is row level SDT. Uh, so entire row of table can be defined as SDT element. Well, um, I have no idea how to do this correctly. And uh, most important, I have no idea what we can use this SDT for. Uh, well, there are some ideas, some scenarios uh, potentially useful, but I did fail uh, to do this practically. No, it is uh, possible to create uh, this type of SDT practically, but I have no idea what sense for this SDT. But who knows? I am not uh, an expert in this area, in spite uh, of uh, spent uh, time in this area. So, well, classically we see that uh, SDTs are used uh, as a form. And uh, in case of a writer, we still have uh, some problems with these forms. And uh, much of the problems came from that uh, not every type of SDT is recognized as a form element. And a classical uh, use case, like mentioned the uh, Bugzilla task, when we have a document which is uh, right protected, a uh, user has uh, access allowance uh, just to edit form content, but uh, because there are no form elements, user cannot edit nothing. Solution what, uh, was quite simple. Let's use a classical uh, writer text input fields. Well, solution not best uh, practically, but on semantic level, looks okay. Uh, we have some input uh, field uh, in source uh, document. We have some input fields inside writer. Where e well, they are a bit different, but actually doing the about the same job. And yes, uh, this did help to resolve an initial problem. Uh, well, we have a, a edit field uh, and right now form and document became editable. But well, this uh, brings some other new uh, problems. Uh, problems with formatting of this field. Um, and yes, this one is uh, not yet fixed. Sorry about that, again. Uh, but I have some ideas uh, how this can be improved. Uh, try to uh, find a time to resolve this topic. Hmm. This was easy case. Uh, this case uh, became much, much more interesting. In spite of uh, I feel myself I'm an expert in SDT. Uh, oh, what else you can uh, do with, uh, with forms? I found uh, this one situation. And uh, on document level, things uh, look uh, pretty familiar. Uh, and uh, it looks very related to what I already showed you about. Paragraph, SDT insight, some properties nonsense uh, we keep in grab back and uh, we are written back uh, correctly in docx, so no problems here. Content, with some text inside, some content. What can went wrong? We open it with writer. We see uh, the same some content element. 
so um, everything is fine but let's open it inside word mm, what valid answer Insta instead of some content what is it where did it came from it is uh, not written anywhere inside our document but what does display uh, absolutely different uh, content uh, practically and uh, to understand uh, what actually is happening here we need to look deeper inside uh, this SDT properties nonsense and where it, uh, we can find an uh, interesting uh, property data binding we, uh, with definition of some interesting properties uh, which are responsible about fetching the data where the content of this SDT came from and the situation uh, with SDT became um, very related uh, to situation we have with forms with uh, fields with shapes uh, things uh, defined inside SDT content are actually just uh, pre-recorded results some calculated result which can use any reader that doesn't understand about SDT but if you want to do something more complex uh, receive more relevant data or update the data this is also a topic you should understand what is happening inside SDT properties and especially about data binding as I already said situation is very similar to what we have a field and field result shape and shape result if any reader does not understand uh, how to process the shape it can just take shape result and uh, here it is a bitmap just draw it and uh, don't bother it will be something about what is written in shape in most cases not always but well since you don't understand shapes your problem and if we look into this data binding more correctly, more deeply, we have several attributes. At first, XPath. Well, mm, no surprises, just XPath expression, which is used to calculate some uh, external XML file. Yeah, in this case, we have uh, some custom XML folder with custom XMLs, uh, which can uh, contain some uh, specific customer data. Uh, not always uh, this uh, type of data binding can be referring to some internal properties of document not always uh, about custom XML but uh, again XPath is used store item ID this is uh, what I was missing for a long time to understand how we distinguish uh, among many XML files which file to evaluate XPath and uh, my initial implementation uh, almost a year ago was uh, quite primitive and stupid we were evaluating XPath uh, for every XML we know about XPath succeed? ok, we got a result XPath failed? well, mm, we have some XMLs uh, to check with well, I understand this is uh, really stupid but I did not know how this store item ID is working really, in practice and uh, this property contains a global identifier of storage and this global identifier is uh, stored in some special another xml uh, you can see it is uh, it has name item properties and number dot xml which is uh, defines the, the global id for xml file item one dot xml for example instead of here uh, can be usually numbers uh, used item properties one and matching corresponding uh, item item one item two and item properties two and so on and also we have some special predefined uh, global identifiers for core properties it is classical uh, document properties like uh, title uh, author of document and so on and so on and uh, another identifier for custom properties it is user defined properties uh, which stored uh, in tokix package in separate xml file and yeah we can uh, query for modification and for displaying inside SDT all these type of properties and uh, 
final element we have for data binding is prefix mappings. It is just a list of uh, namespaces uh, defined in this XML to XPath evaluator to uh, work correctly. This is how the things are designed. But practically I have a questions about uh, this design. Uh, starting from the end, prefix mappings. Uh, why do we need this property explicitly given? Uh, because uh, inside uh, this special XML about item properties, we already have uh, information about use uh, namespaces. Uh, why we provide this uh, second time inside data mappings? Uh, I have no answer. Uh, more important uh, topic about uh, these global identifiers instead of uh, resource identifiers. In most cases uh, in docx package we use uh, local resource IDs, we have special uh, .rels files which uh, defines list of uh, resources and when we inside document we just uh, link to these resources, for example it is an image in separate file and we just uh, place uh, RID number 7, for example, and this will be a reference to this image. Or hyperlinks are also defined as a, some resource ID, and inside document we also just provide a link to this resource. But in this case uh, we ignore these uh, relation files. Yes, uh, all these XMLs are mentioned there, because they are included inside package, but uh, in data flow we do not use these IDs. Instead, we use these uh, global identifiers. I have only one idea why it is made so, uh, with potential extension to support uh, some extensions to Microsoft Word. For example, we have some extension which registers some identifier, global identifier, unique identifier, and when document try to uh, ask for some data from special storage ID and the storage ID is matching, the job about seeking the data is extension related. But in this case, uh, why we limited only to XPath? Because uh, my extension can be uh, something more specific. For example, I can fetch some data a user asking from SQL by database or some other source I don't know. Why XPath? Well, again, no answer. But this is how things are designed uh, in SDT. This is reality we live in. If you think uh, these complex features are just uh, some geeky features created uh, only with custom XML editing, you're wrong. It is uh, easily can be done uh, inside uh, Word by itself. Under the same developer tab, we have a huge button called XML name, Naming Pane. And uh, clicking on this button shows corresponding panel uh, on the right side of the board, where you can uh, select and drop down list uh, all the at, uh, existing attached XML files, or even attach a new file uh, included in, in bundle, and uh, iterate through this uh, XML tree. And for any uh, random node, you can just insert content control and type of control you want to use. What's important about content control? But uh, yes, I was uh, talking to this moment about reading real value uh, from this uh, external XML file. But on modification, we also should update it back in, into this XML. And yeah. This nowadays uh, also done by writer, as you can see. So, as you probably noticed, the SDT is something much more wider than uh, just uh, another attempt uh, to fill the forms uh, invented by Microsoft. As uh, standard says, uh, this is a final form of uh, extra standard semantics uh, represented by SDT. Well, um, what I love about specifications is that I understand all the letters, understand all the words, but altogether I have no idea what it means. What is this practically? Again, based on my understanding of specification of OpenOffice XML, 
uh, we have structured document text uh, we also referred in specification as a content control and uh, it is a, another attempt to, to separate the document presentation and some data we put in document this is uh, one possibility provided by SDT uh, as already shown in the previous example we have some data kept in somewhere in a custom XML file with embed in our document and uh, practically it is uh, just a combination of uh, custom XML markup which uh, already about feature I've talked about and a smart tag feature of Microsoft Word it is just ability to mark some areas of document uh, with some special let's say bookmark for later automate the, the, the document uh, data fetching and yeah it can be used uh, to fill the forms so what's practically did happen uh, this worked to support uh, all the features I already mentioned about uh, took a bunch of uh, commits uh, done uh, at the end of last year uh, I hope these efforts uh, did improve LibreOffice and uh, do not break it uh, very heavy and uh, actually according to my impression SDT became much more stable than it was before at least uh, in the cases I see I'm, I'm aware about but it is uh, actually not a final situation uh, we are missing tons of uh, different things uh, which are used in SDT for example the interesting feature about the uh, control of multi-line uh, for any element of SDT form we can uh, tweak and decide uh, are the uh, enterprises uh, uh, allowed in this uh, text field or not so can you have more than one line in this uh, element or not um, in writer currently we are missing this color of highlighting um, nice and fancy feature making uh, your forms much uh, nicer uh, instead of just a boring uh, gray highlight uh, background highlight uh, like we have in LibreOffice right now Microsoft Word allowed us uh, to have uh, some other random colors uh, to highlight it would be nice to have this placeholders and uh, embedding text about the dog part well this is another complex feature I don't want to dig uh, into uh, because it is related to uh, glossary part uh, which contains an uh, entire new document structure which contains some document parts uh, which can be referred uh, from our document or in this plate holder to be embedded uh, inside main document uh, it is uh, complicated stuff and LibreOffice does absolutely nothing about this I'm not sure how often it is used and use it all probably we are happy right now without this uh, part of uh, open office xml specification I don't know building blocks another cool feature of SDT is uh, allowing to construct complex documents right now nothing here in our case repeating sections another type of SDT is, uh, and probably this is case uh, where uh, this uh, table row SDT makes sense image galleries uh, also I can insert it in my document what I can use it for mm, no ready answer well probably in some cases are possible and yeah this is not complete list uh, of things uh, which can be happened uh, with SDT and yeah we are missing in our writer many of them still bad news uh, there are ton tons of them good news Mm, I think they are mostly business uh, oriented features and uh, not actually useful for many uh, end users let's say because uh, for me as an end user I can use the writer to fill uh, any form containing SDT and I'm happy but uh, if I want to create a form with SDT well this is absolutely another topic and we can discuss it and that's all. 
thank you for listening to me about this topic. Sorry, no questions can be answered uh, during this session. You can re reach me uh, somewhere else uh, by email or on IRC or on Telegram. Many thanks. See you.